the so in that sense uh, let's go back to your previous point uh, y y you do seem to be thinking that transhumanism is kind of coming mainstream say in, in the first decade of, 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 of the 21st century and and yeah. and that seems to be kind of rather different than the than the situation in say late 80s or early 90s yeah I mean I think it was pretty uh these ideas were, were pretty obscure in the 80s and 90s, and, and they were associated largely with uh, cyberpunk, I think, in the public imagination. I mean, if, if you uh, went around like I did, I toured the uh, country on the United States on behalf of the book A User's Guide to the New Edge, and, you know, if I would go on uh, radio or TV or whatever, mostly they would be familiar th with these ideas. This was pre-Wired pre magazine. They, they were familiar with these ideas if the, uh, uh, they were in touch with science fiction culture, if they were in touch with uh, cyberpunk, and then uh, if they were in touch with, uh, with learning about some developments that were taking place in actuality. Um, but I, yeah, it was pretty pretty obscure. I mean, Eric Drexler's ideas were, were going around about the nanotechnology within uh, uh, some sectors of the scientific community. People who read science mag, pop science magazines, may have heard a little bit about it. Uh, but I, I I think you just you just see more of it and you hear more more about it um, today in uh, mass media. You find more people familiar with these ideas and uh, comfortable with it or uncomfortable with it, but uh, with, with, a, with a sense that uh, there's an inevitability uh, that uh, some of these things will happen, that some some of these things are plausible. And Barbara Walters had a uh, special on uh, Will You Live to Be, I can't remember, 150 or whatever. So normatively speaking, do you think that's a, that's a positive development, a, a negative development? Do you think that something's being lost uh, uh, in that sort of coming up in the open, uh, or, or, or do you think so, uh, something is being gained? Well, no, I think, uh, you know, any time you have information and ideas spreading and being made more accessible to more people, you know, however however those people choose to access those ideas, whether it's through a uh, television show or uh, through the net or whatever, um, that's uh, on the whole a, a very good thing. Um, you know, it's a good thing for uh, people to learn about and be thinking about and uh, uh, can only be helpful, I think, I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, not having it be our special little subculture, um, I, I never really cared for, for that kind of thinking, you know, all the people who were like part of punk who became upset when their bands became popular or whatever, I, I, I never interested in me, um, you know, I, I think that if people want to do something different with the ideas of transhumanism, you want to do something non-mainstream with it, want to do art that's not mainstream with it, want to do advocacy that's not mainstream with it, or against it for that matter. They have every opportunity to do that. Um, uh, so that the, so the fact that these ideas are spreading and being discussed, uh, you know, in, in a mainstream context shouldn't, shouldn't have any impact on that. You know, uh, it's been a few years since I read uh, William Gibson's uh, classic Neuromancer. Yeah, but me too. In the last uh, week or so, I actually decided to take some mental time off, and I went and read the, the second and the third part of the trilogy, Count Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive. Right. And uh, one of the things that sort of came back to me uh, was the, the sort of dark prevalence of, of all kinds of drugs throughout his books and and his heroes generally all of them using all kinds of different drugs so let me ask you uh, first of all how much do you think that William Gibson's Neuromancer uh, sort of inspired the, the cyberpunk culture of the 80s and the 90s and then the, the second issue is uh, what do you think is the relationship between psychedelic drugs and transhumanism and should there be one okay well I mean Gibson I think was reflecting a culture that was already around him uh -huh. uh, when he wrote Neuromancer I think he uh, was quoted as saying he uh, went into a uh, uh, some kind of a place where uh, a lot of kids were playing video games while listening to their Walkmans through headphones 
And just from that s small image of all these young people sort of being absorbed in a, a sort of very raw virtual world, he can imagine young people being absorbed in a much more elaborate, uh, you know, construct, cyber cyberspace and so forth. And I mean, you know, youth culture and young adult culture in the 1980s was a drug culture, perhaps uh, to, to a certain extent it's, it still is. So, um, you know, he was just re reflecting that and reflecting the idea that, uh, um, you know, there, there was sort of the official corporate culture and then there's a culture in which most young people participate, which is, you know, drugs and nightclubs and, uh, uh, you know, sort of on uh, somewhere on the uh, border, border or boundary between uh, outlawdom or criminality and uh, normal life and so forth. So he was reflecting those things. I think, I mean, Neuromancer... And that trilogy influenced a lot of inventors, which uh, sort of confounded Gibson because he had written a fairly dark series of novels. But, uh, you know, a lot of virtual reality inventors came up to him and said, well, thank you so much. You know, I'm, I'm inventing the world you imagined. Um, and Gibson, I, Gibson was very clear that uh, he didn't think his novels were dystopian, but uh, nor did he think they were utopian. Uh, but uh, he was intrigued that the people, technology people, were really influenced by it. Um, the hacker culture, I mean, a, a hacker culture existed all along. You know, people uh, writing the software and also the, the, the uh, crackers, the people sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, breaking into systems or whatever. Those cultures existed all along. Uh, the self-image of the people who were involved in that uh, was probably mutated by... Uh, cyberpunk, um, so that uh, you know you could be a cool geek with a leather leather jacket and, and mirror shades or whatever, and you know that started to infect um, uh, music culture and club culture and all that. Um, so it was kind of more of a give and take between uh, the visions of uh, uh, William Gibson and uh, also to some extent Bruce Sterling and uh, John Shirley and a few other people, and the uh, fact that. Uh, you know, sort of hipster club cultures and uh, hacker cultures already existed and continued to exist. Now, with transhumanism, um, I think I mean, the, the theme uh, is enhancement. And with psychedelic drugs, the theme uh, is brain enhancement or perhaps life enhancement in the sense that uh, if, if you... Uh, theoretically or I think realistically, if you use these things well, and don't overuse them, and uh, know what you're doing, um, you can uh, bring about uh, uh, states within yourself that are a little bit more flexible, and uh, you can find yourself enjoying life a little bit more. Also, a, a number of people have uh, reported using uh, small doses of psychedelics, particularly LSD, as a uh, um, brain enhancement drug in, in, in a even in a linear, linear sense, it would be more alert, uh, sort of uh, taking what uh, we get from stimulants, but uh, uh, it seems to give a little bit of a, a spin, a, a little bit of, a, adds a little bit of creativity to uh, that punch. Um, so, let's see, I'm losing you, are you seeing me? Uh, I'm seeing you. I mean, okay. there, there were a couple of interruptions, but but overall, it's it's not too bad, I think. Okay, um, so um, I think it's a. I'm not sure how exactly it works. Uh, James Kent, who uh, was the neuro uh, columnist for H Plus Magazine, has written a book about uh, uh, how psychedelics work in the brain. Uh, called psychedelic information theory. People can look that up if they're curious and uh, maybe learn a little bit about what the current science is uh, with how these things work effectively. Now, of course, they all work differently. Psilocybin and LSD have different uh, effects. But I think something is going on there with pattern recognition. Uh, enhanced pattern recognition sometimes and distorted pattern, pattern recognition Sometimes I think that they, they seem to come together. So I mean, uh, so you can you can get enhancement or you can get the distortion in which you think you were you know the the queen of Atlantis uh, or whatever. So, so do you think that in that sense, uh, uh, designer drugs or so-called smart drugs 
would inevitably uh, be a part of the sort of transhumanist future? Um, well, we, we don't really know. I, I mean, people are... Uh, should they be? Do you think they should be also? Like, well, I mean, they... So they those are two questions. They should be if we don't have something better. I mean, there's tra transmagnetic cranial stimulation. Um, there's a possibility of photonic implants in the brain uh, so that uh, we may... In the ingestion of a chemical through the, uh, you know, having it go into the stomach and then uh, fan out from there is is pretty sloppy. Of course, uh, there'd be more precision precision drugs um, targeted to, uh, to the brain and so forth. So that that might happen. But I I, mean, I think some sort of outside agent uh, acting on the brain to uh, speed it up a little bit um, to uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, understand and integrate and see patterns in uh, larger quantities of information uh, is probably something that uh, will be uh, necessary for human beings. Now, of course, the, uh, the singularity narrative, the singularitarian narrative, is uh, um, that uh, you, you could uh, design artificial intelligences, you know, uh, um, you, know, you can basically uh, reformat the brain, outside of the brain, and uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, Kurzweil, certainly his, his view is that uh, we would unite with these things and, and have them in, in ourselves, and uh, we probably wouldn't require any uh, drugs at this point. I mean, we might like psychedelic drugs still to get high, but... Uh, uh, as far as intelligence goes, we uh, might not require drugs or, or other kinds of interventions.